Welcome to Burt Ridgeway's Learning for Life. This is Lesson 2, Part 2 of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain. And this is in the series of Learning a Tune from Scratch. If you just stumbled upon this lesson on YouTube, I would recommend not watching this video. I'd recommend you zipping to the end of the video. Fast forward, you'll find an end screen that will take you to the first lesson, which was last week. Or you can go to my name below and you will see a, it's probably over there, uh, you'll see Brett Ridgeway's Learning for Life. Click on that, then go to Playlists, go to Clawhammer Banjo, or it says Banjo, I believe. Go through and you'll find those same lessons there, along with many, many other lessons. The reason is you need to know the foundation. In that first lesson, we taught you to play the scale. And then I, I gave you tips and hints of how to pick out the first melody line of she'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. I showed you that. And then I encouraged you to pick out the rest of the tune. And I hope you did that. Again, whether you were able to, whether you succeeded, doesn't matter at all at this point. What does matter is that you tried, that you put in the effort. That really does matter. And then I also encouraged you to take simple melodies like Three Blind Mice, Mary Had a Little Lamb, uh, nursery rhymes, and pick out the melodies. And I hope throughout the week you did that as well. So we're going to jump right in. We're not reteaching the tune. And we're going to start adding some right hand techniques and also the chords with the left hand. So, and this is interesting because I've done this so many times. When I'm playing this fast, I could just play the tune. When I slow it down to teach it, I have to think and I mess up because I'm playing again with my head, with my eyes, you know, more my head just, you know, thinking. Whereas if I just played the tune, I can play it without any problem because I'm teaching and I've taught my fingers to play. So let's start the tune. And we're just going to do bum ditties. I'm going to be honest with you. I rarely ever do bum ditties. Um, I know that's what everybody starts with. And I actually have a hard time doing them at this point because of, of something you'll see here. But let's just play it through with a bum ditty. And I'll give you a couple ideas. Make your C, uh, your F chord. Now you can brush, which helps. I wouldn't brush constantly. That's also just as not interesting. <laughs> you can mix it up. Uh, to me, that sounded very stiff. What I do is instead of playing a bum ditty, I play a bum T. So you you are allowing the timing. Bum dit T. So you're coming down on the dit, but you're picking off on the T. Bum dit T. Bum. Now, again, I want to reemphasize, I know the tune, but because I'm sitting here thinking and trying to teach it, I don't find the notes, which is probably what you're going through. But what you want to do, if, if I was just playing and I wasn't trying to teach anything, I could play it and my fingers would know where to go. That's what picking out the tune by ear does for you. So that's a bum T. I call that a skip. I don't know, or a hesitation. Uh, you can mix the two up. Sorry. Right. 
So you can do bum ditties, mix the bum ditties up, and then do the skips and the hesitations. So that's that's fairly uh, fairly easy. Uh, you notice I went into a triple thumb or a double thumb. I don't even know what I did again because my hands know what to play, not my head. So now we're going to do drop thumb. And actually, let's just do, because drop thumb fits into shorter pieces. Uh, let's do, let's do triple thumbing. And again, go back into my videos, look for the triple thumbing exercises. I will explain it here very briefly, but then we're just going to play it. It's called triple thumbing because your thumb moves three times in a row. So here's what I just did. Here's your first phrase. Triple thumb. Triple thumb. Skip or hesitation. When you're playing this triple thumbing, you're playing it on the offbeat. And that's what adds the syncopation. In other words, Three and now I'm going to recommend something to you. That's your first phrase. I would not try to put triple thumbing in anywhere else if you're doing this. In other words, if you're breaking it down and have to think about it, one of the best ways to learn the triple thumbing is just to listen. And I'm just going to do this right now for you uh, and, and try to play along with me. So we'll start off slow. Let's try this. I'm, I'm hitting the second string. Just try to jump into that. If your thumb comes down and hits a different string than the second, that's fine. But you want to get this timing. I'm going to go a little faster. So again, from the beginning, I even added something there. Let's not do that yet. Right there, triple thumb, make your G. Now that's just a drop thumb. You can't get it all in there. I, actually, I guess you can. Here's your F. Again, I threw in a couple other things I shouldn't have thrown in. It's hard to just play and break down what I'm doing. So what I want you to work on this week 
is adding just the bum ditty. And you can brush. One of the other things I do is instead of using the tips of my nails to brush, I use the back. And I actually turn my hand a little bit. It gives you a soft sound. So just do the bum ditties with a brush and then do the skips or hesitations. And then do the triple thumbing. And you see I did put a, a second one in there. So that's what I want you to do this week. Take your time. Something that's very, very important to know is next week we have another lesson coming up. That does not mean you have to be ready for the lesson next week. If you need to work on this for a couple of weeks, that's fine. Uh, you know, people have lives, people are busy. Sometimes people uh, just don't have the time or they, and, and by the way, that doesn't mean you shouldn't make time. I'm not saying that, you should. But what I'm saying is if you haven't accomplished it yet, everybody learns at different speeds. You know, if you're a slow learner, by the way, that's that's a good thing. You know, I've asked this question so many times. If you were having an open heart surgery, would you want your doctor to have learned everything fast? Or would you rather have been a slow learner and taken his time and done it right? And that, you know, kind of puts things in perspective. So learn it slow, learn it well. Add in the, the drop thumb or the bum ditty, uh, the hesitation, and then the triple thumbing. And we will see you next week. Thank you, patrons, for your giving and support. I could not do this without your help. It's only because of your giving that I'm able to do these lessons, that I'm able to share these lessons free of charge without pers uh, subscription. You are the heart and soul of what this program is all about. And I want to thank you for your help. If you're taking these lessons, <laughs> you need to thank a patron today and better yet, become a patron today. Uh, your help is definitely needed uh, to help this program to continue. Uh, I'm almost at, I think, two years, uh, finishing maybe three years now. And uh, I'm trying to think I st when I started this, but I haven't made a penny yet of profit. Uh, it's only supported by the patrons. And of, of course, that's my goal to actually get paid for what I do. Uh, but it's because of the patrons. And I want to thank them first and foremost and anyone who might consider becoming a patron. Thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for sharing them. We will see you next week for your next lesson.